So we'll just take you through another case and show you how we manage obesity in a patient who's presented uh, in the clinic. So I, I think by and large, the biggest problem in obesity management is to try and get motivation from the patient to lose weight. Often we have a spouse, often we have a parent, a sibling, doctor, isko wasn't kam karna hai. The patient has to agree ki mujhe kam karna hai, and then only it starts to work. But there are certain exceptions. In clinical practice, uh, there are certain patients who become really motivated. I think one example is somebody who's having infertility, and they are definitely going to lose weight. They'll listen to each and every word that you say, and they'll follow it to the T and lose weight. Another example is uh, when people have young onset uh, type 2 diabetes, somebody who's 21, 22, they get a shock, oh my god, diabetes at the age of 22 because of obesity, I need to get rid of it and I need to lose weight. Sometimes, uh, yeah, young girls planning marriage, they have a wedding dress in mind, okay, I have to lose weight. So there are certain motivators, but the motivation that we're talking today for this particular patient is uh, a patient who's had an experience with chest pain and obesity and has realized that it's the weight which is attributing to the chest pain and the angina and the cardiac problem. So let's look at this case, and this is a story of a 62-year-old male. The BMI, as you see, is 40. BMI, as we just learned in the last lecture, is just not important. We need to look at the comorbidities, and this gentleman already has prediabetes, has hypertension, has ischemic heart disease. So clearly, stage two EOS, they have a definite complication related to obesity, hypertension, cardiovascular disease. So yes, so this is stage two. This is a BMI of 40. Already tried weight loss in the past, lost some weight, but really not uh, continued. And this is the point that I was trying to make in the first presentation where I was talking about weight regain. So in the, this particular patient, there has been no sustainable weight loss. Previously, has never really been interested in losing weight, so that is uh, the problem. But now, because of the angina, the patient has presented for uh, wanting to get rid of some of the weight that the patient has, and that motivation gives a, a big role. So what we're seeing here is a patient who's got prediabetes and obesity along with hypertension and probable ischemic heart disease. Now we all know that uh, obesity per se is a risk factor for developing diabetes. We also know that prediabetes is a risk factor for developing diabetes. But when we combine obesity in a patient who's got prediabetes, the odds is 17-fold. It's much, much higher. And uh, it's not, I mean, we well know that diabetes is a risk factor for cardiovascular disease, but prediabetes is also not that sane as it may sound like. Especially for us in Indians, and this is a paper from Dr. Mohan's group, where we know that Indians, in particular, just zoom in from pre-diabetes to diabetes. The Western literature and what studies I showed in the last slide is from a Finnish database. But from an Indian perspective, we just zoom in if we have pre-diabetes to diabetes. Our risks are probably much more. We know that diabetes is a risk factor for CVD. Pre-diabetes is an equally big risk factor. A very recent meta-analysis published in Diabetology, which is an umbrella meta-analysis. Umbrella meta-analysis means it's a meta-analysis of meta-analysis. 95 meta-analysis they've analyzed and seen how pre-diabetes per se can be a very big risk for mortality for CVD. So that sounds all quite bad, but the good thing is that if patients lose weight, if patients with pre-diabetes lose weight, we can achieve a lot of reduction in cardiovascular mortality reduction in mortality due to stroke, and overall mortality. Another recent paper, and you see these Kaplan-Meier curves. These are all patients with prediabetes, with obesity. And once they lose weight, you see the red lines, which are the lowest. So they have the lowest mortality. So even though I said all the bad news about prediabetes and obesity having a high risk for CV mortality, if this patient, the patient who's presented to us with angina, realizes that weight loss is important, we can do much good for him. How do we do that? Yes, lifestyle interventions are important. This is one of the cohorts in Kerala that we follow. Yes, it does help to reduce CV risk. Several risk factors can be reduced by lifestyle. We often talk about that 5% weight loss that I mentioned, but I think 
what is important is that if you really want to reduce the cardiovascular mortality, it is little more than 5%. It is probably in the bracket of 10 to 15% that we're looking at if you want to reduce the CV disease. And that's why it's important. So yes, we can do that with diet, look ahead study, one of the biggest studies which has looked at nutritional intervention for weight loss, yes, if people have lost more than 10% weight, the CV risk does come down. But this is a slide that I showed earlier as well, that weight maintenance is often difficult, and therefore there is a very important role, again, of medications which is coming up in terms of weight loss. As of now, US FDA approved five drugs. We have Olistat and GLP-1 analogs in India. We don't have 3MG. We have... Uh, 1.8 mg of liraglutide, but the future is definitely very bright. We have several GLP-1 analogs that can be used for weight loss, which do come into the bracket of more than 10% weight loss, obviously in addition to diet and exercise. What we have currently in the market is oral semaglutide, but hopefully we would get the injectable version, which is already there in the US market, approved by the FDA, the weight loss to the scale of 15 to 20%. Well, for the patient who's got obesity also has angina, and many of these GLP-1-RAs today have CV safety data, not only safety, but even protective outcomes in terms of major cardiovascular events. A recent study published last year in NEGM looking at injectable semaglutide 2.4 mg and the quantum of weight loss about 15%. So these are the kind of drugs that do push weight loss more than 10% and can help promote good amount of weight loss. Again, when we look at the CV risk factors, all of that improves. And newer molecules are there in the pipeline being tested, not only globally, but even in India. This is another such molecule, a combination of an amylin analog with semaglutide. Again, the kind of results that we've seen with the phase two data are equivalent, almost equivalent to bariatric surgery. And you see this long list. So. There are drugs coming up. So the main message that I wanted to leave you with this particular case is, yes, at times you have to take that opportunity when the patient comes to you motivated to lose weight. Never lose that opportunity. No matter what is the inciting factor, it is very helpful to educate the patient in the right way as to how they are going to lose weight. And especially when we're talking of CV disease, cardiovascular disease, it is helpful to do diet and exercise, but we need to get that bracket of weight loss to the 10 to 15% where medical management can also help. So I'll stop here, but we'd be happy to take any questions.